Hello everyone! So this will be my first update ever and hopefully one of many such updates. I'll start with the monthly updates as weekly would be too much hard work. But also we get best idea what is happening this month and where are we headed. Work started on SpaceX Mark IV Starship. NASA orders 10 more SLS cores for future manned mission. Rocket Lab aims for the moon in 2020 with Electron reusability. Blue Origin New Glenn update, Virgin Galactic news and much, much more. SpaceX news. What to say about SpaceX? Oh gosh, there's loads of stuff coming from SpaceX. Starlink, Starship Mark 3, Starship Mark 4 and some more. SpaceX has started work on Starship Mark 3 and 4 and to remind you all, Starship Mark 3 will be the first Starship capable of orbital flight. There might be some slight design changes or tweaks to recently unveiled design, but nothing extreme. The design itself will be capable of launching from the pad which are being prepared at Boca Chica, Texas, as well as Coca facility in Florida. SpaceX plans to test suborbital Starship sometimes in November or early December, if it can secure FAA approval. The 5000 meter flight test could happen later this year. The 20 km flight test, which Elon Musk hinted could happen as well, but it's less likely to happen before late December due to stricter FAA rules and safety concerns. However, SpaceX is working hard to complete Mark 3 and Mark 4 Starships, with deadlines for both Starships moved forward. Elon Musk would like to start testing suborbital Starships earlier than expected. Perhaps within weeks from now, we could see first 5000 meter Starship test. This would still be slightly behind initial schedule, but still within the planned time frame. However, if both Mark 3 and Mark 4 Starships are completed by mid to late March, which could happen, the orbital flights could happen in late April or early May, ahead of schedule. Starling SpaceX owns space-based internet that will dominate industry in 2020s. The Starlink will literally play such important role in SpaceX future finances. I've done video a while back and my own projections at the time estimated that SpaceX, just from ad revenue through Starlink internet services, could generate more money than Facebook in less than five years. Longer term, Starlink could be the way SpaceX finances solar system colonization from Moon, Mars and Venus and beyond. By the way, I'll be working on a Terraform Venus video in the near future. Anyhow, Starlink, my projections are, will make around 30 to 40 billion dollars per year in ad revenue alone by late 2020s. Just to emphasize, SpaceX current revenue is around 1.7 to 2.5 billion US dollars per year. Moving away from SpaceX and on to NASA. Sadly, US Congress has not approved additional funding for 2024 manned moon mission, meaning it is unlikely the moon mission will happen before 2028. In 2020 budget, Trump administration will need to find extra $3.2 billion to finance manned moon mission by 2024 to ensure mission happens. This is about a tenth of the actual total cost and third of additional financing that is needed for the manned mission by 2024. On a happier note, first all-female spacewalking team, Christina Koch and Jessica Mayer, make history. On Friday, October 18th, NASA astronauts Christina Koch and Jessica Mayer completed NASA's first all-women spacewalk. During the 7 hours and 17 minute spacewalk, the pair replaced a failed power controller and completed several other tasks in preparation for future spacewalks. According to Bridenstine, first person to Mars is most likely a woman. He was heard saying, if my 11 year old daughter has the way, we'll have the woman on Mars in not too distant future. However, a recent study on space travel points out that women astronauts would suffer less on a long voyage to Mars and also being stuck on Mars, requiring less food, water and air. NASA unveiled Artemis spacesuits, its new design for future spaces that astronauts will wear during the trips to lunar surface. The suits are still in development, but NASA claims they'll be ready to keep astronauts alive in space by 2024. Known as the XEMU, these next generation spacesuits build on the older design of suits already worn by astronauts to the International Space Station. 
these new spacesuits a significant upgrade on the existing spacesuit, allowing astronauts who are wearing them to work longer on surface of the moon or during the spacewalk. NASA has taken the next step towards building Space Launch System rocket core stages to support as many as 10 Artemis missions, including the mission that will carry the first woman and next man to the moon by 2024. SLS, which I hoped would be put to the greener pastures, was given a massive boost in NASA's future manned space missions beyond Earth. 10 are planned with SLS alone. A daunting prospect considering the cost of each SLS rocket. The agency it tends to work with Boeing, the current lead contractor for the core stages of the rockets that will fly on the first two At Artemis missions for the production of SLS rockets through the next decade. The core stage is the center part of the rocket that contains two large giant liquid fuel tanks. Towering 65 meters with a diameter of 8.4 meters, it will store cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and all the systems that will feed the stages of four RS-25 engines. Boeing's current contract includes the SLS core stages for the Artemis 1 and Artemis 2 missions, and the first exploration upper stage, as well as structural test articles and the core stage pathfinder. The exploration upper stage will provide even more lift capability to deep space, up to 45 metric tons to lunar orbit or about half the amount SpaceX Starship can bring into the orbit. The full SLS contract is expected to support up to 10 cores and up to 8 exploration upper stages. The Space Launch System rocket, Orion Spacecraft Gateway and Human Landing System are part of NASA's backbone for deep space exploration. Work is well underway on both the Artemis 1 and 2 rockets, with core stages assembly nearly complete at Michoud. Soon the stages will be shipped to NASA's Stennis Space Center near Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, where it will undergo green run testing, an integrated test of the entire new stage that culminates with the firing of all four RS-25 engines. Upon completion of the test, NASA's Pegasus barge will take the core stages to NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it will be integrated with the other parts of the rocket and Orion for Artemis 1. Boeing also completed manufacturing most of the main core stages structures for Artemis 2. NASA has also started to evaluate potential habitats for future manned base on the moon, with Bigelow Aerospace inflatable habitats offering best short-term solutions for future moon base occupants. The smaller version of Bigelow habitat is being tested on ISS. Module, also known as BEAM, has proven to be quite resilient. In other news, NASA Lucid Trojan Asteroid Mission announced a mission to be launched in late 2021 with Trojan asteroids that share orbit with Jupiter in vast warms, leading and trailing the planet. 12-year mission will see Lucy visit seven asteroids looking into composition of asteroids which formed at the very beginning of our solar system some 4.6 billion years ago. Japan to send first ever moon rover, a rover called Yaoki will fly on the commercial Astrobiotic Lander. The Pittsburgh-based company Astrobiotic plans to send its robotic Peregrine Lander to the lunar surface by July 2021 on a mission sponsored by NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Service, or CLIPS program. The flight will be the first for Peregrine and its rocket, United Launch Alliance new Vulcan Centaur or Kantar vehicle. The UK is set to make its own giant leap soon as well with a very small one kilogram rover. A four legged robot built by London based Spacebit will launch aboard Astrobiotics Peregrine Moon Lander as well in July 2021. At the International Astronautical Congress in Washington, D.C., Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos announced a new national team that will join forces in order to help return humans to the moon via NASA Artemis program. They will focus on developing the human landing system that will be used to achieve its goal. Blue Origin will serve as a lead contractor for this new industry collaboration, which also includes Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Drapa. The partnership will serve to pursue NASA's stated mission of getting the first American woman and next American man to the surface of the moon by 2024. Each partner in this new alliance will take on specific roles pertaining to help NASA achieve its goal. 
Blue Origin is going to be acting as the primary contractor and lead on the program management of the partners involved, as well as take on the system engineering and responsibility for safety and mission structures. They will also provide the scent element of the overall, the human landing system, which will consist of the Blue Moon lander and the B7 engine that will provide its propulsion. Blue Origin started work on New Glenn rocket, which should be unveiled later on next year. The rocket will be semi-reusable, with first stage fully reusable, and Blue Origin plans at some point to develop second stage reusability as well, reducing the cost of launch even further. 82 meter rocket will be powered by six BE-4 rocket engines. Blue Origin has been developing for past four years. Virgin Galactic and Under Armour unveiled Virgin Galactic spacesuit for first space tourists. Virgin Galactic hopes to start first commercial space trips next year, with list of potential customers now in thousands. With 800 customers already paying the deposit for the first space flight, Virgin hopes to build a fleet of spacecraft to ferry a number of space tourists into the high orbit of around 100-110 kilometers, where would-be travelers will experience weightlessness and several minutes before they have to return back to Earth. Eventually. Virgin Galactic hopes to place a small space hotel in low Earth orbit, aptly named Galactic Suites. No date for space hotel or actual designs yet. Rocket Lab announced that it had begun to explore the possibility of reusing its smallest launch vehicle, Electron. This represents the change of heart for the company, whose chief executive Peter Beck had previously dismissed the possibility of reusing the Electron booster. Rocket Lab also hopes to begin missions to the moon in 2020 with a new Photon spacecraft. Rocket Lab has successfully begun to transform into an operational launch company this year with five successful Electron missions in 2019 and promise of a couple of more before the year ends. Rocket Lab set a new altitude record for the company by sending a 20 kg payload to 1200 km circular orbit. Rocket Lab announced that with its photon upper stage, it will be able to send small payloads all the way to the lunar orbit. Small satellites will play a crucial role in science and exploration as well as providing communication navigation infrastructure to support returning humans to the moon. If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you.